Linux, with its myriad of distros, can feel like a labyrinth of choices. It's easy to think they are all just clones with a fresh coat of paint. And I used to share this sentiment until I stumbled upon Zorin OS. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't Zorin another player in this copycat game? Well, buckle up, because my recent dive into Zorin OS has left me with some surprising insights. Watch till the end to know more. Okay, so finally I have booted into Zorin and the first thing that I noticed in Zorin is this beautiful desktop environment which is based on GNOME. Let us talk about the latest features of Zorin OS 17. Okay, first we have universal search and other improvements to Zorin menu. The Zorin menu, your starting point in Zorin OS is now faster and more efficient. It lets you quickly find files, calendar events, contacts, apps from the software store, world clocks and even works as a calculator. With the universal search feature in Zorin menu, you can easily customize which searches are active. Just go to settings, search or right click on the menu and choose search settings from the new menu that pops up. The menu also has links to edit menu app and other important system shortcuts. Next we have some changes over here which has a all new all apps category which lists all the apps which are installed in your system over here. These are already alphabetically sorted. Next we have some all new multitasking features. Now let us launch some new applications to showcase the multitasking feature. I already have files running in the background so I'll switch to this and transfer files over there. So if I head over to the overview mode you can either click on the activities menu icon over here or Alternatively, you can hit the super key on your keyboard which also launches the activity page. But what is interesting here, if you double press the super key, it actually launches the all applications page over here and you can just drag and drop any of the apps you feel like into one of the workspaces and it will open the, over there. It's very interesting how Zorin has implemented this multitasking feature. So it looks like this. What I'm really fan of is the dark mode. So let me just switch to the dark mode. I was actually using the dark mode previously. I switched back to the light so that I can just show you how the transition looks like. It's pretty simple but at the same time you'll notice the background also changes. They have a custom set wallpaper for the dark mode itself. It looks really nice and very well matches the Zorin OS theme. But what I really don't like is the contrast of the icons in the dark mode, if you go to home folder, you will notice that uh, the contrast is really high. I don't feel much of a problem over here, but it just crossed my mind, so I thought of mentioning. But I don't know why the dark mode does not really switch to the dark mode for the weather app. I guess if I enter the city, it might be doing something. Yeah, it then switches to the dark mode for the weather app. So it's using the 41.0 version of the weather application. It's fine. But the version of GNOME used is a little bit old. They are currently using GNOME 43 while 45 is already out. And some of the apps are also from GNOME 42 version. In number three, we have Spatial Desktop. It's actually a kind of new animation as Zorin describes, an exciting new way to take multitasking to the next dimension. It actually gives you better contextual awareness about what's happening on your desktop uh, and also make computing experience fun. It's basically just a kind of a desktop cube animation they have in included over here. What you can do is just head over to Zorin appearance and inside effect you'll get this option for desktop cube. Just turn it on and when you switch between workspaces will notice this and as you can see in the background you get that cube kind of effect but it's not really cube it's kind of surrounding the entire uh, place it's kind of a cylindrical kind of view in the background but anyway this is a new feature that Zorin has implemented it also adds some parallax effect to the applications which are launched currently uh, but it's not really visible over here because I'm using mouse and if you have a trackpad it will be far more better for you to use that. The same goes for alt tab and super tab. As of now you can't see anything happening in alt tab or super tab because uh, it's not enabled but if you again go back to Zorin appearance and turn on spatial window switcher this also does the same thing. You get this kind of animation. If you just hover on some of these applications which are turned on, just click and you will be able to see it coming in the foreground so that you can understand what is behind the current app. 
It's a clean feature implemented. You can also scroll using the scroll wheel on your mouse. So it's quite simple. To be honest, it is a little bit more distracting to be switching windows like this. Here's a small settings logo. If you click that, it basically opens the extension page so that you can change all the stuff over here. Okay, that is the end for special desktop feature. Now let's move on to the next part. Next, we have performance improvement. Now Zorin claims that the speed has been their top focus in Zorin OS 17, so the desktop runs drastically snappier. The performance optimization have been made at entry level of the operating system, from the kernel to the desktop environment, apps open faster and animations are much smoother right now. But as always with all kind of Linux installation, I find most of them are really fast. But for this case, I feel like the original vanilla GNOME experience, especially what I experienced with Fedora 39, is actually much smoother than the one over here. So as you can see, if I go to uh, like full screen and back, there are some kind of glitches that are appearing. But I guess we are on X11, might be the reason for that. But I'm pretty sure that GNOME also provides Wayland options. The software store has been updated. It is basically GNOME software. So if you just go to About Software, we'll see the version which is currently using is 42.4. And it is really fast. Is sometimes GNOME software causes issues and app pages do not open as fast as you would expect. But right now, what I'm seeing is that it is quite fast uh, but it looks a bit more modern on their page because of the color scheme that discord has used and also the rounded corners in their app screenshot pages what zorin could have done is forcibly adding rounded corners for all of the applications so it would have looked a little bit better for example in brave browser over here it is a pretty basic gnome experience in softwares you get all those new tiles over here you have the option to switch to Flatpak or Zorin OS official repositories. So let me also show you that. Let's go for installed and random. Let's go to archive manager. As you can see, Zorin OS is selected. If you want, you can select the Flatpak version also accordingly. So all of the data are updated according to the selection. So if I go to Flathub, you can see, or from Flatpak, you can see it needs 4.2 MB of size with additional 374.2 MBs of downloads and Zorin OS packages this much 1.8 MB. Okay next we have some advanced window tiling features which you can access from the Zorin appearance page. I already have it enabled so head over to interface you have these advanced window tiling feature. Now uh, there are some issues here which I forgot to mention earlier also it applies to all of them. If you click on settings you will notice that you get the extensions page over here but if you already have the extensions page open for example if i click on taskbar settings mm, so if i click on the settings page again it actually does nothing so it's a minor bug which is still there and i can't really blame zorin for anything because the it is still a pre-release software so tiny bugs like these are expected let's close it and click on the settings page this is actually one of the most requested features of Zorin OS. So, yeah. Now, you can press the Windows plus left key. It aligns it to your left side of the screen. Right aligns to right. Up key makes it maximizing. And down key again puts it back to floating mode. So, you get all the key bindings over here. So that you know which key activates what. Now, if you want, you can just click this button to disable any of those. For example, if you want to disable this, just click it and it will get disabled. If you click on uh, the one which already has a shortcut or is disabled, it will ask you to press a shortcut. For example, I pressed Ctrl 1 and now if I press Ctrl 1 again, it moves the window to the center. It's a very handy feature and for many of those who like to live inside the keyboard, they can use this feature. And it also makes window management a lot faster and efficient. Now, if you have multiple apps open inside the same page, let's go here. As you can see, many apps are open. So basically a few of them are here. I can focus on any of the window and then press Windows key or the super key and then the left key, which will put this on the left side. And on the right side, you will get all the applications with support tiling. And accordingly, you can click on them to resize the window uh, according to the screen size. So since I just have Firefox running inside this workspace itself, it, it just shows Firefox over here. 
If I click on it, it gets aligned perfectly. Now, if I want to reduce or increase the size, I can also do it from here. Next, we have an all new revamped quick settings menu. So it is basically the GNOME interface again with changed colors matched to the current theme. And I like it how it very well matches to the wallpaper in the background. It looks great. Now, if you want, you can switch to the light mode from here itself, as you know. And again, if you want, you can switch back to the dark mode. It also lets you change among all these devices and open sound settings from the sound output page itself. But it does not show which device is currently active for the sound output, which is weird. The same goes for the sound input part. You also get adjustable power modes over here. Currently, it is set to balanced. You can switch to power saver or performance modes. Right now, it is not turned on. If I turn on, I can switch to something else. For example, performance. Now it is turned on. If I just click here, it again switches back to balanced. So let's switch to performance. What Zorin has also done is inside their settings page, let us again switch back to dark mode. Inside their settings page, if you go to power options, you can also change it from here itself. You can switch to something like power saver and it will also switch over here. On the upper part, it gives some information on the battery, but I do not have battery here because it is a desktop. So I'm just going to show you the official screenshot on Zorin's website. Zorin also claims to have added an all new screen recording feature, which can be accessed from the quick settings menu. But again, it is just the GNOME screen recorder, which is themed according to Zorin. But GNOME screen recording, I don't know why it produces WebM file. It is very difficult for me to convert them to MP4 so that I can edit them on DaVinci Resolve. So if you have any idea how to directly record in MP4 or MKV from the GNOME's official screen recorder, do drop a comment down below. But as of now, I'm using this application, which is a GPU screen recorder, and it runs insanely fast and smooth. Okay, next we have some redesigned applications like the weather app, which is redesigned. Basically, it is updated to a later version. Currently, we have the 41.0 version of the weather app installed, and you can change the temperature units from here. It is a very clean piece of GTK4 software right now, which even changes the interface based on the size of the window screen and it is integrated throughout the desktop. At first glance, Zorin OS may seem like another Ubuntu-based distribution with a different GTK theme and an array of extensions. However, delving deeper, we can find out that Zorin is more than a mere surface level modification. Zorin OS stands out not only for its user-friendly approach, but also for its aesthetically pleasing design, offering users a visually appealing experience right from the start. The desktop environment with its themed GNOME interface provides a beautiful and intuitive environment that feels like a breath of fresh air for newcomers to Linux. What sets Zorin apart is its commitment to providing a polished experience without relying heavily on the terminal. Unlike some Linux distributions that might require users to delve into the command line for various tasks, Zorin prioritizes a graphical user interface that allows users to perform common activities easily and intuitively. Moreover, Zorin OS strikes a balance between user-friendliness and customization. While the initial interface mimics the look of popular operating systems like that of Windows or Mac OS, users have the flexibility to personalize their experience. Zorin's user interface is not locked down. Users can easily change the accent color of the theme, subtly influencing the appearance of every application. But however, for those who desire a more significant change, Zorin Appearance offers the option to install entirely different GTK theme, allowing users to tailor the look and feel of the system to their preferences. But the weird part is Zorin tries to hide the theme they are currently using for by default for some reason. It just shows null when the default GTK theme is in use. So once the user changes the GTK theme or the icon pack, he or she won't have a way to return to the previous settings other than resetting the default which switches to the light mode. So that is a small issue. But if you can overlook all these small problems, in essence, Zorin OS not only provides a welcoming environment for newcomers with its beautiful and intuitive design, but also empowers users to customize their experience, striking a balance between familiarity and personalization in the world of Linux. So that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.